Hello everyone and welcome to my let's play of World of Lasers. <laughs> so, as you can tell, the 8.6 patch is out and my tank is slowly sitting here waiting to see where everybody heads off to. And yeah, everything, and I, I mean I brought out this good old friend of mine, the ISU-152, otherwise known as the BL-10 carrier, because, well, quite honestly, everything in this game got a whole lot more stupid accurate, and it is insane. I mean, I've I've had both good and bad experiences, good with the TDs especially, bad with, well, light tanks. <laughs> Why is that? Because, um, I've actually had a lot of trouble making light tanks work recently. Well, in general, I always have had light tanks not work for me very well, but just the the very good accuracy like that of guns in this game now uh, really inhibits the ability to play light tanks or at least the way that I know how to play light tanks and of course that's also coming from a grain of salt because I really don't know how to play light tanks to begin with but I mean it's a uh, it's a little bit difficult and frustrating for me because I run into the problem where uh, I just run out there I try to get in cover I make that one move from a uh, rock to rock, and in between those two rocks, when I think I have camo, I just get gutted while at a full burst, and people are just trying to shoot because, well, I feel that they made the game a little too accurate, but don't hate me for saying that. It's just my opinion is that they made it a little too accurate. It makes scouts almost the things of the past. It's very, very difficult, in my opinion, to play a light tank right now, or at least maybe it just requires a little bit more patience, and I mean... As I've spoken before, I my game style is I like to be aggressive and get up in people's face and start doing flanking maneuvers, and I don't like to sit around and wait very long, unless I'm, of course, in a TD or something, but even then, I'm not a big fan of holding off and waiting. I like to be aggressive, I like to get stuff done, I like just moving and going and moving and going and firing, and it's just, right now, the game has changed its meta, using air quotes there for meta, to become more of a... Uh, game of patience because the simple fact that now you're really seeing a lot of tanks whose accuracy used to be unreliable now are very accurate for example this BL-10 carrier it can hit things miles away super accurately and not have a problem and it's it really is making me have to relearn how to play this game my I'm I'll be the first to admit that my stats have gone completely south when playing, uh, and I really should, I, as I stated several times ago, I really should stop looking at my stats. It's a terrible idea, and it only gets me more and more uh, frustrated every time I look at them. But it really has come down to the simple fact that right now the game is going to pay off in spades for those who lay in wait, who take their time, and not those who are like me, who like to be aggressive, get up in people's face, and just start spamming rounds and causing flanking maneuvers and making people react to me. No, now it's waiting for people who uh, are catering to people who can have the patience to wait, wait for those tanks to make the wrong move, because then they'll be easy to hit. You don't have to worry too much about that accuracy. You can snapshot much easier now, and it's something that I am struggling with. I re it really, really is making it difficult for me, and so I'm having to relearn almost how to play the game from scratch. So... By all means, rock that BL-10. Rock that, you know, KV-2 with the 152. It really is that much more accurate, especially if you're just auto-aim clicking, which, it, as I said in the last episode of this thing before I hopped onto the, uh, the, what is it, the Xbox version real quick to give that a shot, which I have up probably two videos before this? Yeah, two videos before this. That, uh, if you just right-click and fire that it's good to get you on target or if they're steady. Now right-click firing is actually not bad at all for just getting on a target quickly and then popping a shot off. And I mean, especially with some other tanks where you have the ability to just line up, take your time, it's uh, just, there's no reason not to. It is great as I crush the, uh, the IS-4 there. But yeah, the uh, just the abilities that tanks have now, I mean, you're... You're able to actually aim at those weak points now that were very difficult to hit from long distances. You really just have, you can almost expect your uh, rounds to go exactly where the the reticle is pointing or the little dot to be pointing. It's not very hard to see it nowadays. And it's uh, it has changed up the game dramatically for me. Like right now I'm right clicked on that uh, T30. As you can see I'm not really aiming at his hole, I'm not aiming at his turret, just somewhere in between. Right click fire, got him. And it's uh, just the sheer 
craziness that is the, I believe they're using two sigma standard deviation now, so you're looking at, what is that, 65% confidence, or is that 90% confidence rating? I forget my sigmas, it's been a while. But yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting little change up in how things are working. And so, I mean, it's it's both good and bad. It really is requiring me to relearn the game, which is, you know, not a bad thing at all. But it's just, I have a lot of getting used to to do. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the stats of this game and we'll continue on, because this was quick. Believe it or not, I never had uh, mastery on this tank until now. Go figure how that happened. I guess it's just because now that um, TDs can actually get experience for tracking people in addition to the fact that now they get full experience instead of the two-thirds experience they used to get or something crazy like that so hey i'm not arguing and getting about 3800 experience 3900 that ain't bad at all and 52,000 credits is you know that's pretty good i guess i don't really know what the average is for this tank it's been a while since i played it i've been playing this thing since clan wars is tier 8 at the moment so we've been messing around with this and i've been running the uh the ISU, or the BL-10 carrier, I should just call it. So that's my primary, and I have a few other backups that I run as well. But yeah, so not too shabby there, killing four guys, and... Oh no, killing three guys, hitting an extra two on top of that. So five total damaged, and three killed. So we go on to the team score, and see that it was a gigantic number for me, and for a lot of other people as well. Quite a few 3,000 damages there. We see one, two, three, that I can see at the top of my... Yep, I'm looking at a small screen. But needless to say, lots of damage dealt across the whole team. A lot of people doing heavy damage. So, pretty fun game all around. I mean, it started off slow for me, just sniping little bits here and there. But I finally was able to pick it up, get running, and make things work. And that's when I ended up getting my uh, Master Badge, because we, uh... I was actually patient this time, whereas normally I'm not very patient. I like to, like I said, get in people's faces. So, anyway, we go ahead and take a look at the uh, d detailed report, and we see that 30... what? I gotta look, like, all the way at my laptop there. I'll have to, like... All right, yeah, I'm going blind, obviously. 3,800 damage. Not shabby at all with six hits, six pens. So, one for one there. That took one hit for 400 damage. Can't avoid that sometimes. Otherwise, yeah, not too shabby. I, uh, it was a pretty good game, I must say. It was a lot of fun. Very short game, though. It's, it seems that I've been noticing a common trend where, in ever since this patch, it's a giant roll one way or the other. Never is it a close game, except maybe one every ten games is it a close game. Typically, right now, it is either heavily favoring my team winning or heavily favoring the team that I'm playing against winning. Never something close. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the next bit here, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. As I was talking about with the light tanks, actually I'm running two of them. Right now I'm running a uh, T-71, which you see here, and I'm also running the 15, or not 15, 59-13, 59-something-something. Not too, uh, not too sure exactly which one. It's the Chinese light tank that's, uh, tier 6. And then, I'm, I'm not really having that much trouble with the T-71. I just need to constantly remind myself to, uh, play smart, take my time, and just generally not, you know, run out in the middle of things. Don't use it as a scout, more use it as a, um, what do you want, a support tank. Very similar to the 1375, 1390. But the 15, or not 15, the 5913, I'm struggling to really find a good play style for it. And I've tried using all the available guns from the auto loader down to the uh, the stock gun. And I've actually found that the 57mm, the stock one, is much better than the auto loader just because it can actually penetrate. The auto loader cannot, for any sense of the means, penetrate anything. Whereas the 71 which is technically, what, a tier higher, I believe? Yeah, it can penetrate almost everything with its 70, uh, what is this thing? It's not 70 millimeter, it's a, uh, 76 millimeter, I think? Either which way, I've had a lot of good luck with this, this tank. If I play it smart, play it slow, and don't get out there and, and just run around people. I need to play it more as a, um, as like a reload sniper or a, almost a support tank. Let my friends get up there and get in the mix of it, and I just swoop in from behind to help peel down some of that damage. Don't go out there and be a crazy sauce and think that I'm the 1375 that I used to be and be able to just crush everything that comes my way. No, no, no. This oh, this is a new generation in tanks. There is no uh, 
no ability for scouts to run around like they used to. And now it's a it's a game of accuracy and having to really play to that fact. And that's something that I'm I'm having to get used to, and I hope you all are getting used to it as well. And that's that you actually can rush your shots a bit more. You don't actually have to let them uh, get all the way in. You just point that little dot that you see there in the center of my screen at wherever it is you want to hit, and there should be about a 60% confidency. Again, I'd, I'd need to actually look up that sigma rate, but um, you should have at least enough confidence that it's going to go to that dot. And I mean, that's just the simple fact that the sigma's a little bit on the good side right now, so take advantage of it while you can. That being said, though, I mean, I've talked enough about the lights and the uh, the heavies and the TDs and how I've been uh, having good streaks and bad streaks with them, but the artillery themselves has significantly changed. The uh, the dispersion rate has actually increased, but the accuracy has gone up as well, or has changed mildly. So now your bubble's bigger, and the aim time for that bubble to shrink in is bigger, but it seems like you can actually hit a little more commonly. And so, uh, it really is making artillery have to pre-aim their areas. They can no longer switch area to area. And they're also having to take their time making sure their shots are going to count because that reload is now extended as well. So I found myself with my artillery, and I'm actually knock on wood, <laughs> as you hear there. I actually have done fairly well with my artillery. I have really uh, managed to outperform what I thought was going to happen. And that comes a lot from, ooh, I got lucky there that I got that bounce. But, ooh, that's rough. What is it? The, uh, I'm running the Lorraine 155.50. And so with that, I found, at least now, this might not pertain to all, uh, SPGs. But at least it's pertaining to the 50, uh, the 155.50. And I've heard it also pertains to the new ones as well, since they've, um, they've been less affected by this as they're new and coming out with this in mind. And also the British, which are coming out in the next patch. So take a look out for those with their uh, turrets, because they're going to be great in uh, helping to deal with this fact. But what I'm doing is I'm taking my time, I'm really placing my shots and making sure what I want to hit, I'm going to hit. I don't try and shoot things on the move as much anymore, unless they're moving in a straight line at me. If things are moving in a straight line at you, you can aim one or one and a half tank lengths before them, and generally you'll hit. If they're moving side to side, that's going to take a little bit more uh, difficult aiming process, because you're now having to deal with traverse of the gun, you might hit the edge of it as opposed to slowly bringing it towards you, which means it actually makes it tighter of an aim. So, they're moving side to side, usually I find I need to aim about two tank lengths if they're halfway across the map. And then uh, from there, it's kind of a half tank either direction, and then that's just fine-tuning. And really, I've gotten to the point where I don't like to uh, shoot at things that are on the move anymore with my SPGs, unless, like I said, they're moving at me or directly away from me, because those are a little bit easier to engage with artillery right now. Now, as for anything that's holding still, that's game on. I will make sure... Well, what I like to do is I like to make sure that my... Uh, I zoom all the way in, or let my reticle aim all the way in. I don't like to, like I said, rush that shot at all. I want to make sure that I'm going to hit what I'm aiming at, so I like to let that wind all the way in before I take a shot at something. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee what I'm going to hit is going to be anywhere close, and I can actually risk hitting my own allies. So I'm starting to get into the mindset where I'm just slowly taking that time, making sure I'm aiming where I think tanks are going to be or where tanks were last spotted, and then I just wait for them to move out in the open, or wait and just have to minorly adjust into a different position with my reticle so that I'm going to hit anywhere around like a building where they might pop out at. Anything like that. So I no longer go, you know, am able to hit on the move as easily. It, I'm taking more safe bet shots. And that's my only words of advice that I can highly recommend for uh, the SPGs at the moment. Is definitely need to take your time and go for the easy kill, the shots. The, the guys who are standing still. Or the guys who are moving either towards you or away from you. Don't try and go for guys who are moving side to side. Unless you have a high confidence rate, you're going to hit them. Because you, if you miss, it's going to be a long reload these days. So, let's go ahead and move on to uh, one final tank here. Because these were very short. Oh, no. No, we're going to save that one, actually. We're going to save that one for the next video. So, let's take a look at the stats for the T-71 and wrap it up there. Because I... Uh, I'll explain it when I talk into the stats as to why I think I'm going to cut it off there. 
landing a triple amount of experience there because of the whatever it was event last weekend. I was able to score about 37,000, 37,000, that is impressive, 3,700 uh, experience and 31,000 credits getting sniper of all things in a rapid fire tank. I mean, I guess that can happen sometimes. I didn't think I actually hit that much, but I'm not going to argue. And then, of course, getting a uh, Master Gunner and, what is that? <laughs> I can't see, and Sharpshooter. Man, I need to... I need to uninstall this MSI Easy Viewer. I need to install or uh, just use Windows Picture Viewer thingy thing because it's like, I don't know. Anyway, enough to chat about my computer. So, I killed uh, two people out of that group, but I also damaged a good chunk of people. What is that? One, two, three others, and then spotting damage on that uh, artillery piece who just appeared out of nowhere behind me. Funny thing how I ran behind him. But yeah, so. A little bit of light tank action there, and just trying to still trying to figure out how to make light tanks work in this new patch. It's not easy. Maybe just the 5916 or 5913, whatever it is, is just a little bit uh, difficult for me to learn. 5916, I think. Yeah, I don't know. One of the two. Anyway, we'll go ahead and take a look at the team score there, and we see that, uh, yeah, for a light tank, I actually did a, quite a bit of damage with the T71 in a game that I was fighting off uh, tier 8. Eights? Yeah, eights and not, no, no, nines. <laughs> I cannot see. Anyway, yeah, so fighting off a good group of stuff over there. Not a bad little match for me. And, of course, our whole team doing very, very, very excellent as I was pulling up kind of top third. But still, we have a artillery piece dropping heavy damage up there. And then we have a Ferdinand right below him. And just all over the place, our team in general was doing fantastic. So we got lucky there that we pulled it. Well, not really lucky. Again, this whole, plays in the whole aspect which we talked about earlier, which is it is a roll one way or another. It doesn't seem to really be too much in the in-between. So other than that, I don't really see too much anywhere there to talk about. So go on to the detailed report. And we see that I did 2,000 damage, 2,093 damage to be exact. And I sustained up to 1,100 damage, which is more than this thing's even capable of in three hits. <laughs> I just got lucky that one just took out my gun instead of taking out me. Otherwise, yeah, I'd be a smoking crater long, long before then. So yeah, 23 shots fired, 21 hits. So that's where I got my sniper from, was all those shots fired and actually hitting. And that goes to show you the power of this new mo or this new patch and that whole, what do you want to call it, um, the Sigma values that they put into it. So now I'm hitting a lot more consistently, especially with the tank that at that range probably would not be able to hit that accurately, let alone doing all that sorts of damage. So it works for and against in a lot of senses. And like I said, it's requiring a whole new play style from what I've determined. And that's really going to force me to play a little slower and a lot more cautiously. I can't be, you know, going out there and being headlong and aggressive like I used to. And it's going to take a while to change that mentality. And it's going to be tough. So, hopefully I can do it because, I mean, otherwise, as I said earlier, don't look at my stats. And, of course, what am I doing looking at my stats? So, just one of those things where it's going to take a little bit of time and practice. And that's for everybody. It seems that, again, that this is, right now, this patch is favoring the more uh, patient player instead of the more aggressive player like myself. So... Hopefully you guys can take that to heart and learn from that and be able to t make it work for you. And hopefully that the uh, new accuracy is working in your advantage as well. So I actually am going to cut it off here instead of doing another one because this way I get out a shorter video, like 15 minute-ish, as opposed to like a 20-30 minute episode that seems to bog a lot of people down. And it lets me uh, record a little bit more stuff quicker because I've been running into the problem where I've actually been not having too good of games. And who wants to see me get, you know... You know, one shot it right off the bat, or running my 59, 16, or whatever it is, and just getting smoked well, without doing anything. Anyway, so enough talk about that. I will catch you guys. Uh, yeah, I should probably. I'll try and rotate a little more company heroes in this back and forth. We have the holiday coming up for the 4th of July, so I'll probably be back up in New Jersey actually for that. So I might not be able to record. I'll try and get something out in advance though. Anyway. I want to thank you guys for uh, coming out and watching this video, and I will catch you guys in my next episode. See you guys.